Hey YouTube, Meat Magnet here. Welcome to episode 36 of our Feed the Beast Continuum Quick Tips and Tricks. Uh, let's see. Today, uh, look at the goal over some of the ways to get Iridium. Um, and I've kind of been pushing this out for a while because it, it kind of made sense, but looking at some of the stuff going forward, it looks like now is the time to do this shit. So, um... Let's take a look at one of the ways we can pick up some Iridium here, other than going down and picking this shit up by hand. So it's found in the overworld from Y8 to Y75. It's rare. Uh, it's not really that rare. Uh, it's, it's just a pain in the ass to get. So let's take a look at this. Oh, here we go. You, you matter. Easiest way to pick this shit up because we don't have a tier 6 void miner yet. Um, at least you probably don't. And I sure as hell don't have a fusion control computer to be mixing a uh, Wolframium and Lithium cells to get this stuff. So, we're going to do this with UU Matter. So, the way we're going to pick that up is... Whoops. I suppose it would help if I could spell the goddamn thing. You know what, let's just go up and take a look at it. Because I've already got it built. Um, I will warn you up front right away right now that it, it is a huge energy sink. It is just a, a hog when it comes to um, doing anything. You can see here that max energy is 400 million FE. Um, the input rate here is over 32,000 and it's in the insane tier. Um, right now I've got about 4.5 million FE RF stored in this bitch. Um, and you can see it. It's only at 1%. Um, it's a little bit ridiculous here. So um, let's take a look at what it takes to build this thing. It's actually a matter fabricator, not the mass fab anymore. Unless it was mass fabricator. I don't I don't know. It's the matter fabricator from Tech Reborn. Um, biggest thing we're looking at here, these energy flow circuits, the, you actually get four per craft here, but just keep in mind you're gonna need tungsten and some iridium alloy plate. And then a couple Lapatron crystals. This iridium alloy plate isn't all that difficult to make. Just remember that you're going to need, uh, looks like four iridium, and then some advanced alloy plate and some crushed diamond. So, going to need that. That's not too expensive. These extractors are relatively cheap. You're looking at some, uh, some reinforced or refined iron here and turn that into a basic machine frame. No big deal. Uh, this Lapatronic energy orb. This is a little bit more difficult. Um, as you can see, this is going to require some batteries. Um, I'll show you a quick trip with uh, AE2 to get this stuff pumped up and rocking and rolling. Um, and then this is just some more ir iridium alloy plate. So, But anyway, that's this thing. Take a look. Um, this isn't too difficult to make. Um, you can see here that I've got a couple power cells here that are actually the highest tier. So 210.3 million RF. That's just the way this is working. Um, to do some supplemental energy here. I think we're at the point where you can use um, the windmills from Tech Reborn. They do a pretty decent job. Let's take a look here very quickly. That is these guys. Um, you're looking at a generator. Whoops. Um, see these aren't all that complicated to make. Iron casing is pretty easy. Um, most complicated thing here is probably going to be this magnalium plate. Um, and this is just going to be in the rolling machine with some magnesium dust. And you can pick that up by, was I running through there, Peridot? Yep, Peridot dust to pick that stuff up. Actually, I think I ran some marble through the industrial centrifuge too, and that picks you up one automatically. So just remember, marble or Peridot, whichever you want to do, it makes more sense to use marble if you have it. Um, and then the windmill sails. I think if you did uh, if you did the windmills like I did, you should have had a whole bunch of industrial hemp fiber left over to make these. So um, go ahead and make these. The uh, the output rate isn't all that great, but it's a pretty good supplement. And I've got three of these. I just kind of hooked them up. So I got rid of the uh, uh, immersive engineering wire lines. So this is kind of just how this is set up now. Let's go take a look at one of the other machines downstairs because we're going to have to... Uh, get this to work. The thing about the, uh, the matter fabricator is that it requires scrap boxes in order to do its business. So that requires a recycler. Um, what's going on here is I'm actually pumping in 
cobblestone. Cobblestone goes in the top, goes into the machine, and then it shits out. Wait for it. Whoops. Scrap. And right now I've got about 31k sitting in there. I can't even put this shit back in because it's got uh, all my ME drives are full. Uh, <laughs> you can kind of see it down there. I've been pumping this shit in through the ME network. Um, so I've got an export boss hanging on a chest which pumps into the machine. Um, you can kind of see that here. So input and it outputs into this chest and then is sucked up by an import bus back into the ME network. Now this is on. And I'm going to leave that alone for now because I don't want a whole shitload of cobblestone sitting in there. But as you can see over here, I've been re reusing this. Um, I've used this for basalt, obsidian, and right now it's kind of just doing its business making cobblestone. It's stopped right now because my ME network is full. Um, with the lava and water that's in there, this is uh, it's neutral. It'll just keep pumping this out. Not very fast, mind you, but it'll keep pumping it out. So... That's how I got my 31k scrap. It probably happened over, I don't know, 36 hours. I took a couple days off from, from any Minecraft here, so that's what's going on. Let's take a look at this stuff. We're going to look at some scrap. Um, so scrap is great, but we really need to get the, these guys scrap boxes. Um, this is what the Matter Fabricator works off of. Um, yeah, matter fabricator, uh, scrap boxes. So let's get a whole bunch of these going. We're just going to take those out of there and go up here. And I'm actually going to shut that setup off for the recycler. I think I've got enough here. Um, so 4.5 million. RF set in here. I'm going to put as much of this in here as I can. And you can see, um, that RF is it's it's fucking gone. So <laughs> this thing is a huge, huge energy sink. It takes a shit ton of energy to make this work. Um, we can hook this thing back up, but as you can see, this is just this is ridiculous. The amount of energy this thing takes. Um, so keep in mind, try and before you go do any of this matter fabricator stuff, get yourself another power cell here because this thing is going to suck up just ass loads of energy. Um, I was running that reactor at the same time, but since I've got enough of a buffer here, I think I'm going to be okay with this. What the hell? I've been opening those. <laughs> if you didn't know, you can actually use these scrap boxes and open them, and you get random shit. Like there, I just got a water cell and then a fence. So if you want to play with this shit, you can. Um, scrap boxes are kind of fun, but really, this is the best place to be using this shit is here. Just because. So... Now, we're picking up UU Matter. Great, right? Okay. Let's shut this off because we don't want to take any more of that stuff up right now because it's unnecessary. But let's take a look at what we can do with this UU Matter now that we've got it. Um, one of the great things about it is, let's get rid of this, and before we get too much going on here. Let's shut this off. So our igneous extruder is not doing anything anymore, which is exactly what we want. We don't need to pump it anymore out. And I'm actually going to shut the recycler off. In case I do need some cobblestone, we aren't going to pump it into there. Okay, let's take a look at this quick. Um, so there's different recipe for this UU matter stuff. You can kind of play with it. Um, one of the important ones here is probably um, snow. If you don't have a glacial precipitator, um, you can do it this way. Snow is kind of expensive. Um, if you're going to do that, use the snow um, just because um, we should be able to take that and do whatever you want with it. Um, but anyway, there's different recipes in here that you can actually use these. So we've got snow, there's some other stuff in here like that's the one for obsidian and there's a whole bunch of sugar cane and there's actually some other ones here that are pretty useful. There's diamonds if you're in a pinch. Um, there's some other ones here. Gunpowder. This is also gunpowder. I thought there was one more that was important. Jungle vines, no. 
Okay. Well, anyway, you goof off with those. You can kind of see it different combinations. But the one we're actually looking for is this guy. It's the eye. There it is. Iridium ore. So we could pump this in here and just pull these out. So there, for not a whole lot of effort, we just picked up eight iridium ore, which is good for a couple iridium ingots. Um, best place to go through and process this stuff is going to be right over here. So I'll throw that business in there, let that do it. And that is really it. You can see that there's a certain amount of iridium ingots that are sitting in here. Cool thing about the uh, that set of ore is that it goes straight into ingots out of this guy, so you can kind of just see it. Um, but yeah, that is, that's the best way to get iridium, probably the fastest. Now, why did we have to go through and get that iridium? Um, let's take a look. Um, if you've been following along with Better Questing, which I recommend you, you should, it it's kind of pushes you in the right direction. Um, we've got a lot of our ME stuff here done for the digital style. Um, but one of the things we want to look at here is actually... Um, part of this is fusion and to get this stuff rolling this is the highest energy source I think that I, I know of but this was kind of the next step um, so along with that it was it was working the power cells together um, but the reason we did that is for the flux anything of this flux controller this is going to be the next order of business is getting this stuff rocking and rolling um, just because of the infinite energy transfer um, between the fusion reactor and then the power cells and then some of the other shit around the base here um, let's take a look at these flux cores plutonium and iridium alloy plate so this shit is not cheap and we're looking at a lot of it so each one of these flux cores is going to be four and then the plugs themselves going to be another four with another four. This one's a little bit different. This is just redstone for the point. But that's kind of the next direction that's going to end up. Um, and I think there was some other stuff in here. Whoops. I think some of this stuff is, is energy intense. So some of that shit... Uh, it's just going to require a, an absolute ridiculous amount of energy, especially to do it in any decent amount of time. Uh, most of these machines used to make like hydrogen compressed air and stuff, um, they'll take overclock upgrades, which in turn kind of cranks up the, uh, the energy consumption there. So it can be done with a, a lower tier energy system, but I don't know. I guess it depends on, on is it worth it. The cool thing about upgrading this stuff is that you only have to do it once. So there are a couple things we'll have to do um, that EFAB that's that's coming up too. Um, I think there's some modifications we're going to have to make to that system. But the one thing I wanted to show again really quick is um, we're kind of talking about, you know, how do we get to the point of getting the matter fabricator um, put together? Um, so let's take a look at this again. Uh, so Lapidron crystals, you're going to need quite a few of those. What I did was I set this whole process up from the beginning. So here's what I've got going. In order to make the, this is the medium tier power cell. If we look at power cell. So our high tier here, um, it's going to require four of these medium power cells. The iridium alloy plate, plutonium, and interior plate, you can make those on your own. That's pretty easy. But to get these set up, the power cells, these medium ones, um, it's pretty easy to get this stuff set up. So what I did was push this stuff together. Um, there's a whole bunch of materials in the network. You can see that each one of these, um, all this stuff is put together. But any of these that require any kind of multiple crafting, like Lapitron crystals, um, this stuff is all able to be crafted. So any of the crafted materials should be put in here. You can actually see this. If you put it together this way, um, so it's basic coil, advanced coil. We've got single, double, triple battery. 
we've got the energy crystal, data storage circuit, into Lapatron crystal. Um, and that's really not all that difficult to make. Um, and then we go through and we put together the power cells and then, um, so it's low and medium in order to get to the high. So if you keep enough material in here and you can see it, let's try and craft a medium. I don't know. I don't think I have the stuff to do. Oh, I do. No, nope, I'm short. But you can see here, this is the stuff that you've got to have in this network in order to make this shit. And I've just, you just keep going. Just keep putting the recipes together until you get what you need to get. Because it'll tell you it's missing blah, blah, blah. Like right now, I don't have any diamonds for diamond dust. So, um, but that will craft one of these bad boys um, in order to make a full high power cell. We're going to need four of those. And here you can see I'm missing 15 electronic circuits and 64 diamond dust. So I could have another one of those. Um, I just need the required components. Great thing about this. Um, and you can see here that this is using um, 2100 plus bytes. So what I had to do was increase this. I've actually got a 4K storage, uh, crafting storage block sitting here, hooked into several ME interfaces uh, hanging over a molecular assembler. Um, now keep in mind, if you look at this setup, this is not the ideal way to do this. This is incredibly, well, I shouldn't say incredibly slow. It's not slow, but it is slower than if you had multiple um, molecular assemblers in this system. So. Keep that in mind. Um, you're going to want some of those high power cells to keep yourself going, but get that uh, matter fabricator set up with the recycler. Get your igneous extruder hooked into your ME network, and um, you're probably going to want to upgrade some of your chips there into 4Ks or higher. Uh, that way you got some storage there, but there are ways to speed that machine up, but it does a pretty good job if you're making scrap. Um, I got another 19K sitting in here that I should probably get cleaned up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Get your scrap together, make some scrap boxes, and throw it in the, the matter fabricator and get yourself some UU you matter. Get that iridium. You're going to need a lot of it. So next episode, we'll probably do some different power structure stuff with uh, Flux if I've got it going and possibly be blowing out a wall somewhere back there for a fusion generator. So I think that's it for this episode. Until next time.